Hey, this is Michael Wolf here from Wolf Strength and Conditioning. Today we're going to cover a oft-confused topic, the squeeze up in the deadlift. What it is, how to do it, and how to do it correctly. So first, let's just take a quick look at what it is, what it looks like. So I'm gonna go over to the deadlift bar and just do a demo. Get the bar straight and still. Now you still wanna follow the five-step deadlift setup. That will become important later. Step one, take your stance with your shins about an inch away from the bar. Stance is about hip width with toes out about 15 degrees. Adjust as needed, but that's kind of our starting point. Bar is about an inch away from my shins, give or take. Step two, without bending my knees, without moving the bar, reach down and take my grip. Notice my knees didn't bend, they're soft, but they didn't bend, and I didn't roll the bar when I gripped it. Step three, shins to bar, knees out. Step four, Eyes ahead, big breath in, and then the squeeze. Watch what happens when I squeeze. Step five, drag the bar up your legs. Okay, so that's the whole setup. Let's watch it from the other side, just in case it's not clear from that side. So I'm going to skip talking through the whole setup here and just go to step four, the squeeze up. Again, watch what happens when I squeeze up. Again, watch. Watch my back and watch the bar. Okay, that's your model example. Okay, so now that we saw a visual representation of it, we can verbally express, and a little more clearly now that you've seen it, that the squeeze up doesn't have anything to do with flexing the pecs. A lot of times people think it's flex the pecs or something like that or uh, you know, just any number of weird things. We say squeeze the chest up, not because it's the only perfect cue that works for everybody, but because in the bottom of the deadlift position, most people understand what we mean. The squeeze the chest up is actually an action of the back muscles. It takes the entire back from top to bottom and takes it from a position of flexion to a position of normal anatomical extension. We say neutral not because we mean it in the literal perfect sense of the term, but in the colloquial sense of the term. Uh, you know, what we say, like a neutral spine or a flat back. It doesn't mean that it has to be literally flat. Some people, if they have a kyphosis, will be rounded. Some people, if they have big, juicy erectors, like if they're a 700 deadlifter like I am, your erectors pop out, so it doesn't look the same. So I don't mean this perfectly rigid, uh, and, you know, technical definition of neutral, but what we might colloquially call neutral, a position where you go from all rounded over, where your spine is in flexion and your back isn't rigid, to a position where your spine is roughly in extension, and more importantly than that, your back is perfectly rigid. Um, and that's what we mean when we say squeeze your chest up. It's kind of going from rounded to flat. Or if I'm standing, right, it would be the equivalent of going from here to here. Not to here, right, but just from here to normal kind of proud, tall standing. That's harder to do when you're bent over the bar. Now the reason we say squeeze chest up is because in the bottom you usually perceive what's in front of you. This chest position, make it go up. Or sometimes we say point the nipples at the wall in front of you. Something like that. So that's what it means. Now, once that confusion is alleviated, a couple things often happen. The first is that if you do this correctly with a light weight, you'll notice the bar floats up off the ground a little bit on its own without you actually even initiating the lift yet. That's normal, that's good, that means you're doing a, a good squeeze. One other thing that often happens, and this happens more often when the initial five steps that I demonstrated are not followed, is that the bar, when the person squeezes, at the same time, the bar rolls forward. It can happen even if you did the other steps correctly, but it happens more often if you didn't do the other steps correctly. And this is why doing those steps in that order every single time is useful throughout your lifting career. You know, exceptions aside, that's generally a useful thing to do. And I'll show you what I mean by this and then show you how to fix it. So let's first see what I'm talking about. A lot of times people will not do the steps correctly. They'll bend their knees um, and take the grip at the same time. Bars floating away instead of an, on their shins over midfoot, it's over their toes. They'll squeeze up and then the bar will roll for, further forward away. And then they have to pick it up from here, which usually involves this happening first, at least when the weight gets heavy. And we don't want that. That is an inefficiency that we'd rather avoid. So let's talk about keeping the bar on your legs. Most people at some point in their lives have done a straight arm lat pull down, which is the movement where you take a cable, you put the cable up top, you take a straight bar, 
and you sweep it in to your legs and pull it to your thighs and then back up. That's the movement. Holding the bar on your legs in a deadlift involves the, uh, why am I blanking on the word? Not the eccentric, not the concentric, the isometric contraction of the same thing that would keep the lat pull down bar on your hips. Like if you did a lat pull down and held it here for a couple seconds, that's the same way that you hold the bar. Now it's crucial here not to bend your arms. Arms must stay long and straight. So it's this movement, it's not this movement. It's this movement, not this. So as opposed to the lat pull down where you start from the top and sweep it in, in a correctly done deadlift setup, you never actually have to sweep the bar in because you accomplish the bar touching your shins in step three when you slowly bend your knees till your shins touch the bar. But then you actively do the isometric bottom part of a straight arm lat pull down to keep it there. So what that looks like in practice is this. I'll do the five steps. Stance, about an inch away from the shins. Grip without moving the bar. Shins to bar, knees out. Now from this point on, I'm doing this sweeping motion as if I want to roll the bar behind me, except it can't go behind me because it's already blocked by my shins in the right place. So it's an active isometric contraction. The muscles involved are mainly going to be the lats with a little bit of tricep and rear delt and stuff around there. This is why you will hear power lifters or powerlifting coaches yell, lats! Um, most people have no idea what that means, which is why I don't think it's a useful cue. It's correct that it can be useful, but if you don't know what that means, often it's not useful for a beginner or for somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. So while it is the last to do the movement, thinking about actively keeping the bar or pinning the bar on your legs is more often useful for most people. Whatever cue is useful for you is what you can use, but most of the time, that's what I found. So take my grip, shins to bar, knees out. Now I'm actively doing that sweeping movement, but notice the bar doesn't move because it's blocked by my shins. But I'm actively doing that so that when I squeeze, it doesn't roll forward, as opposed to if I didn't do that, when I squeeze, the bar rolls forward. So I'm actively pinning this sweeping movement isometrically so that when I squeeze up, the bar stays flat and I can drag it right up my legs as opposed to if I'm not doing that and I squeeze up, the bar goes like this and it rolls forward. And if it's heavy, it's just going to roll back and my hips are going to shoot up. And if it's not heavy, it just makes the bar harder to lift because it's three inches in front of me. So that's the idea with squeezing up and keeping the bar on your legs while you squeeze up and then for the whole pull. Hope that was clarifying and we'll see you next time.